Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to Israel to talk with Israeli attorney Amit Akko. Amit is a founding partner of the law firm of Kantor and Akko, where his practice focuses on Israeli immigration law, which opens doors to foreign nationals to come into Israel. I've asked Amit to discuss life, law, and current events in Israel. Welcome, Amit. Good to see you. How are you? Hi, good to see you too. Hi, Mark. Um, I'm from it's Israel. Everything is good. If I can say aloha as well to you. Ah, thank you. Aloha. Yes. Good. Um, we say shalom. Shalom. Okay. Shalom and aloha. Uh, very good. I like that. Uh, okay. Uh, before we get started, and a lot of questions about life and law and current events, let's take a look at a map of Israel and please tell me where you live and what's it like to live in Israel. Right. So, um, well, this country that you now see on the map, it's only established in uh, 1948. And where I live is actually in the center or the heart of Israel, which is the city of Tel Aviv, a very vibrant city on the beach. And it's actually, you can see it on the, um, on the beach there in the middle of the map. And from there, if you want to go to the borders of Israel, it will take you 15 minutes. You see how narrow it is, 15 minutes with the car uh, from uh, east to west. And uh, it will take three to four hours going up north and um, south to Eilat. So this is really a small country, which I'm so proud of. Okay, well, that, that's interesting to know. It takes, that's, yeah, that's almost like Oahu, uh, in a way, traveling around um, the size. Now, you, you practice law in Israel, and uh, briefly, what, what is the Israeli legal system uh, based on? What, what, what is it? And, and you have a high court. Explain what that is. Sure. So... Israel was um, actually established in 1948 after the British have left the country of Palestine. Uh, they left behind them the, um, a, a, a system of law, which is the British legal system, which is a bit different than the one that you know in the US. For example, we do not have any constitution in Israel. What we have is a set of legislations that actually touch all areas of life and criminal and administrative law. And uh, uh, the judges, what they do is they interpret the law when they see a case in front of them. So that is a bit interesting. And this is the English legal system that was imposed on us on 48. And the system of law in Israel is, starts from the uh, magistrate courts. And then if you want to appeal against the decision of the magistrate court, you go to the district court and from there to the High Court of Justice. Now, the High Court of Justice, beside of being uh, 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 dealing with appeals from the uh, district court, they also deal with judicial review, which we will touch a lot today because of some changes that we will be uh, discussing a bit later, I assume. Uh, uh, they deal, the High Court, with every judicial review of individuals against decision of the government. Okay, so the High Court is like our Supreme Court in the United States. Is that an accurate comparison? Well, I'm not that knowledgeable into your Supreme Court, but I assume yes. Okay. It's similar to that. Okay, now I will yeah. tell you some other interesting stuff about the, the judicial system. We don't have jury like you have in the states. Okay, uh, that, that that that's a difference. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, we. I want to ask you. Uh, there have been a lot of news stories recently about the high court. But first of all, uh, I, I, could you explain what the Israeli democracy is like? The government is like what what. 
what uh, comparison or how can you explain it to uh, Americans? What what the what the governmental system of Israel is like? Right. So in Israel, we have only one parliament, and it's called the Knesset. Knesset is a very old word that is being taken from the from our Bible, and it means a parliament of 120 members. Now, this is a nationwide proportional uh, uh, representation, which means that all over the country in one day, everyone chooses for a party. And those parties, later, they divided the mandates between them, uh, which is allocated by the numbers of voters, and then they form a, a, a 120 people from several different parties. And this is a, like a direct uh, vote for the Knesset, for the parliament. And so people don't vote for candidates per se, they vote for a party. Is that right? Correct. Correct. It's exactly so, right, yes. Okay, that's a, quite a bit different than we are used to here in the United States where we, we vote for candidates. Although I, I am sure the party affiliation plays an important role here also but so so that means if your if your party gets a substantial number of votes who 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 gets to represent you how do you select the the people actually what happened after the election the 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 president of israel we have a president as well the president selects the member of the knesset that have the most possibility to form a government, which means that he can form a coalition of at least 61 members of parliament, and together they form the government. So let's say, for example, the leading uh, party is the Likud now in Israel. They have, let's assume, 40. They need another parties that together they have more than 21 members of parliament in order to form a government. So the government always should be more than 61 members of the parliament. Otherwise, they are falling in the, in the next vote. So it must be 61 members. So that's what happened the last time, right? Uh, I mean, the last election, there was some type of a coalition formed. Is, is that right? Correct. No, I mean, it always happens. I mean, always there's somebody who can make a coalition. If not, it goes to another member of the parliament that he will try to make a coalition. And if he doesn't, uh, and if he can't make it, then uh, we have another election. So basically, if you will look into the politic maps, between, nine, between 2019 and 2022 now, there were four general elections in the country because none of the parties could make a strong alliance with other parties to form a, a, a strong uh, government. So the longest that there have been is one year and three months. And this is the recent, oh. up until uh, November this year, when there was an election, which uh, Benjamin Netanyahu won for the um, eighth time, I think he is forming a government in Israel. And um, but now we have, and this is the significance now, the change. We have quite a strong coalition of uh, that is made up from religious, far right, uh, politic um, uh, 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 parties, and the Likud, of course, which is his political uh, 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 party. And uh, this is for the first time since 2019 that there is a strong government. So well, how, how has that affected the climate, the political climate in, in, in Israel? I, I am guessing that when you do that, form a kind of a coalition like that, uh, everybody gives in something and gets something. Is that accurate? Or, or how, how does it work? And what, what, what is the current situation? Well, somebody calls with no offense the Turkish Bazaar because Indeed, as you have mentioned, when, when he wants to make a coalition with the religious party, for example, they will demand and they know their power because he wants to, be, to form a government. So they demand a lot of budgets for 
religious um, uh, uh, organizations like schools, like uh, in, like uh, high schools, yeshiva, they call it. So definitely they want a lot of support to the religious parties. And also there is um, a, a, another political uh, demands of the far right parties, which would like to um, uh, have more uh, powers towards Palestinians, for example, they are more nationalists, and um, they are, for example, they want uh, the West Bank to be inhabited by many Israeli Jewish people, so that it will be uh, belongs to Israel at the end. So this is, yeah, I mean, it, it caused a lot of con controversy now when there is a new government in the country. Well, well, yeah, and I'd like to ask you, I mean, what what is what has been the reaction? Uh, to these uh, changes or these actions within Israel, within the citizens of, of Israel? How are the normal Israeli uh, people uh, feeling about this? You said the uh, normal Israeli people. There are no normal Israeli <laughs> people, to my opinion. But let's leave that aside for a second. Yeah, I mean, if, as you have mentioned, as we have discussed before, actually, almost half of the population is uh, not not voted for that government that's for sure so they look into the um this uh, new regime or the new government they look at it as very in a very threatened way because what actually happened from the beginning of this government uh, 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 they have decided that they would like to make some significant changes one of them is in is in the um, high court which mm. uh, we have just touched before, but they also would like to strong to make a stronger police and to make a more uh, uh, um, to deal with demonstrator more harshly. And um, uh, there was a lot of demonstration in Israel since the beginning uh, of this government. But I assume that uh, by the end of the day, everything will come back to normality because this is part of the political game. To go a little bit, um, uh, a little bit too much, and then to negotiate and go to the middle again. So I believe that will be the same case. And one study case should be the High Court thing. Well, tell us more. What, what is what's being proposed with respect to the High Court? Right. So one of the uh, fundamentals of of our system is that you have. Um, uh, uh, the judiciary system, and you have the army forces, and you have also the Knesset, which is the parliament. And, and we need to balance between them. And what happened um, since, the, since the 80s in Israel, since Aharon Barak, he was the high court, uh, uh, the president of the high court of justice, the, uh, uh, the, the, the right wing parties, they actually think that the high court intervened too much within the government decisions. And I would give an example. If some, something, I mean, if the government, for example, make a decision that they uh, do not want uh, to provide a, a right to demonstrate, for example. This is for you and me and the audience, and I'm, I'm sure about it, this is an irrational decision. So if, if a citizen go to the High Court of Justice and they say they barred my right to to demonstrate, the court will find it a uh, irrational decision. Now, what they would like to do now is to not, I mean, not to allow the uh, courts making decision that against the government that are based on rationality, because the other argument, mm -hmm. their argument is that um, the government was elected and they are the one to make a decision on what is rational and what, is, and what isn't a rational decision. So they want to limit the, the, the uh, strength of the high court. And many people are afraid of it a bit in Israel because they think that um, the government should be watched by the courts in a way. Right. So, yeah. so this is only one, one, one example. The other example is that um, the the right wing 
parties, what they want is to make um, a, a system whereby in case they don't like, I would say, or they do not agree with the high court decision, what they want to do is to uh, overrule the court decisions by a simple majority of 61. And again, many people see that as a, a very strong hazard towards the Israeli democracy. Democracy, because, for example, if um, if if they will decide that no, you cannot tell somebody not to vote; it's irrational. Then they simply rule against it, and uh, in a simple majority in the parliament, which is 61, they will make a decision to overrule the, the high court decision, and then they will be able to not let people go on demonstration. So they're saying, don't be ridiculous, we will never do that. But what we are trying to do here is to change the law in such a way that will allow us to govern this country, which maybe they are right. I mean, I mean, naturally, obviously, half of the people agree with them. So this is now a, a, a big controversy in Israel, and people go on demonstrating about it. This, this weekend in Tel Aviv, there were more than 100,000 people Wow. That were uh, demonstrating. Yes, it is wow, because bear in mind that Israel is a small country and our mm. population is only 9.5 million. So it's not that big country and not a lot of citizens. So it's quite a lot. So for a it, rainy it, day. It, it's an issue that's still in controversy and still to be decided. There is some concern about the threat to democracy. And uh, you, you seem to be hopeful uh, that it will be resolved appropriately without downside, hopefully. Um, now, you yes, I, I believe so. I believe so because, I mean, look at Israel. I mean, we, we've actually built a country from 48. We've gone through a lot of situation whereby there were demonstrations and people didn't agree with each other. But at the end of the day, I'm sure that we will know better how to uh, navigate things and find a compromise that um, I think that politicians nowadays, they see that they have no choice but to get to it and not to do, to use a lot of force in order to make changes. Do the changes slowly. Let me let me ask you, you know, you talked about this proportional system of government where uh, the party is really the one that gets the votes. Has there been any talk about changing that system or is that is that going to be kept? Because it seems to me that 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 when you don't vote for a particular candidate, but for a party, you're not quite sure. Who represents you? I mean, from my point of view. But has there been any talk about changing that at all? Definitely. I mean, actually, I mean, the system that I described before was the system that uh, was all the time in the country up until uh, um, 20 years ago, I think, that there was a change in the law and the people had two votes, one for a party and one for a leader. But that changes after six or seven years because this system didn't, didn't uh, prove itself right. So the, we, we've tried that in Israel for a few years, one or two elections, I'm not sure. But um, then we found out that it's better to go for one party. But, uh, but I think in light of the last five elections, there might be a change in the future in, in, in relation to how the elections will be made and how the parliament will be um, ruled, to my opinion. Yeah, th there might be a change in that. Okay, now I want to ask you a little bit about your practice of law. And you help people, you open doors for people to come into Israel. Uh, who, who, is, who is coming into Israel? And I mean, th th this also is affected, I think, by the political system and the government and the courts, uh, pe people view these things, but who is looking to come into Israel? Who are you helping to come in? Okay, right. So let's talk about Israel first, who is coming to the country. 
I will, I'm always saying, and I always said that if there was no wars around it, around Israel, and there was no conflicts like with the Palestinians, I think Israel is heaven for every person in the world. He can find what he's interested about in Israel. Say, for example, if somebody is interested about history, there's so much history around, so much religious places for, for Muslims, for Christian, for Jewish people. I mean, for everyone, there is a, a places to see. If you were looking to the south, it's deserts. If you were looking the north, and I say it's only three hours drive, you see it's like a, you see mountains and, and snow, and uh, there's a lot of beach in Jerusalem. It's an amazing country. So a lot of tourists arrive to Israel. They come on pilgrimage, and they come sometimes as independent to see the country. There's a lot of um, uh, people, young people, come to see the vibrant life in Tel Aviv, which is really 24-hour city, and it's very friendly towards gay people and lesbians and straight people. Everyone is happy here. Okay, and and also, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also there is the business community. Israel um, is actually very prosperous in terms of economics, in terms of industry and high tech and uh, nanotech and uh, all types of um, high technology. So many people arrive to Israel in order to do business and they also come to work in Israel. And these are the population that I often assist in. So say, for example, if a company needs to send people into the country to work within the research and development groups or to work and to um, establish a, a research facilities in Israel or to make even a power plant in Israel, those people need a work visa. And our law firm, which titled Corporate Immigration Law Firm, we help them do the work visa in Israel to allow them to work in compliance, which is very important nowadays. Is it hard to get into Israel? I mean, is, is you have to pass some security laws or anything like that? Well, yeah, I mean, when you are entering and departing from the country, you always been, you're always subject to uh, security profiling. Um, the security agencies would like to know who the people that are coming to, to the country to see if it's dangerous to, to let them fly or fly in and fly out. So definitely there is the security aspect, but there's also the immigration aspect, aspect of it that uh, they want to see that, um, I mean, because Israel is such a small population, they want to see that there is no change of population by people coming in without a proper visa or without uh, uh, knowing exactly what they're coming to do. So, um, yeah, if there are people who want to come to Israel in order to look for a job, like job seekers and such from Africa, uh, most probably they will not be allowed in, like I think in many other countries in the world, not just from Africa, I'm saying from all over. But um, definitely there is a lot of sc uh, scrutiny at the airport uh, towards uh, inbound passengers to see if they have the proper work visa or if they come to visit that indeed they are uh, allowed to visit the country from security uh, reasons. And last but not least, um, we have uh, the Jewish people that uh, Israel was based on the big, from the beginning on the, um, I mean, one of the reasons for having the state of Israel is that it will become a home for the Jewish people. So in that uh, respect, there is one of the fundamental law in Israel is the um, law of return, which allow every Jewish person in the world to come over to Israel and get the Israeli citizenship. Now, recently we've seen many new immigrants from Russia and from uh, the Ukraine. And, and basically, if you will look before, I mean, the state of Israel was actually born into bringing new uh, uh, Jewish people to build this country. So if my father came from Iraq and my mother, uh, her family came from Europe after the Holocaust, uh, this is a melting pot here. And um, so it's a home for the Jewish people. And these are also people that are coming to Israel. When you see a crisis, for example, in France, 
where, where there was uh, some racism over there. You see a big waves from France arriving to Israel, etc., etc. So that's how it goes. We go from crisis to crisis, and more Jewish people come over to live um, in Israel, in our home country. Ah, that, that's interesting, especially the uh, uh, Ukraine-Russia issue. Um, now, you know, uh, from our viewpoint here in the United States, we see Israel. And if you look at the map again of Israel, uh, it seems to be surrounded by different countries. And not all of them, I think, are friendly. But what, what, do, you tell, what do you tell your prospective immigration clients about this, and and what what are, I mean, are they concerned? Of course, when you look in the TV, I mean, what they see in the frame is the conflict. Normally, they don't see other things. So people are definitely worried if they see a demonstration, people throwing stones or whatever. But basically, I tell them that it's very peaceful to live in the country. I love living in Israel. Honestly, I have choices. But I have made a decision that I want to live in this country because I believe this is our country and we will protect it and we love it and it's peaceful. I mean, most of the people, the experts that are coming into the country, they are surprised by how quiet it is, how peaceful it is. And it doesn't look as it looks in the, um, in the uh, news. Uh, that on the one hand, and indeed we are surrounded by Arab countries, which they don't wish us the, all the best, I think, if to put it mildly. We have Lebanon in the north with the Hezbollah over there that they are controlled by Syria. We have, uh, by uh, Iran, sorry, we have Syria, which they have their, their own issues now that they need to, to solve, which surprisingly gave us some uh, quiet. And we have Jordan that we made a peace with them, which is good. We also have made a peace with Egypt in the past. And Egypt was the strongest Arab country. So this is a bless. And we also, thanks to the United States, had the Abraham Accords now, uh, which is a peace with the UAE and Bahrain. And we are very happy and optimistic because of it. So we thank the U.S. for that and for assisting us, keeping, our, keeping us so strong. And um, yeah, thank you. So it sounds, I mean, you, you are very hopeful. And also the, the view of Israel from you who live there and deal with important immigration issues uh, it is, is, is very hopeful. And, uh, you know, we have a minute left. What, what is the future of Israel? In, in, in your mind, what, what, what do you see uh, as what is going to happen to Israel, despite all these conflicts internally, externally? What is your view? Exactly. I mean, we built our country, exactly as you said, despite all the hardship that we have around us. I believe that Israel will continue to grow and prosper in the next few years. I believe that the education, which is very important to us in Israel, uh, and the fact that the innovation will continue to progress. Uh, we see, I believe, that the advanced technology in water, for example, will assist the world in uh, climate changes uh, solutions. Uh, I believe that our stronger, uh, stronger democratic country as a democracy will uh, stay stable. Despite all the noises that they are around, I think it's just a matter of time and everything will be resolved and will be a strong democracy and we will continue to be that way. I believe that our strong military assisted by the U.S. a lot, and we are thankful for that every day, will continue uh, to ensure the, uh, the, the state security, which is very important with the border that we have, with the long border that we have. And I believe that... Um, when prosperity will come and, um, and the peace will come, hopefully, and we are looking forward to it, really, with all our hearts, everyone in Israel wants to have peace with the Arab world, and that will bring many, many tourists into the country, and it will be a paradise. Well, that's a really interesting uh, viewpoint of Israel, really, as a homeland, and that has survived and grown and prospered despite all the adverse 
adversity <laughs> around it. And and that that is that 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 that's a great outlook. I I appreciate hearing that uh, from you, and uh, an inside look at Israel. Uh, Amit Ako, I I really appreciate your time uh, and talking with you today. Is there anything you'd like to my, close, close with? Yeah, I would just uh, would like to thank the audience and of course to you, Mark, and to the uh, amazing guy at uh, ThinkTech Hawaii for inviting me today. And it was a pleasure. And I want to see you in Israel. All right. Well, al aloha and shalom. Shalom, shalom. Bye. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. I mean, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.